At the Capitol with Senator Charlie Laster. Senator Laster, it was a pretty busy week. A very busy week. This was a deadline week for us in the Senate. We had to have all the bills that came over to us from the House uh, voted on this week, uh, or they're, they're dead. So uh, we, we hit it pretty hard this week. Well, and of course, you're the minority leader over in the Senate, which means you lead the Democratic uh, um, contingent. And this week you had something special that doesn't happen all that often uh, take place in which a legislation was passed on to the governor, it was vetoed, and it was seriously being considered to try to override it through the legislature. Talk about the bill, the issue, and about the process it went through. The bill would uh, make it illegal, and in fact, make it a crime to do uh, embryonic stem cell research in Oklahoma. And it did pass through the legislature without a whole lot of attention to it. It kind of was under the radar, really, because uh, bills actually having to do with abortion draw a lot of attention. And uh, quite frankly, they usually pass with Democratic and Republican support. But this one had to do with embryonic stem cell research, not about abortion, but still a, uh, an issue that um, people that uh, characterize themselves as pro-life are, are very interested in. So um, that bill did pass and it went to the governor and uh, after considering it and listening to a lot of groups the governor decided it was bad policy for Oklahoma to have that bill enacted into law so he vetoed it. Then the next step is uh, in the house that it originated in and it was a house bill they have the right to ask that uh, the members make it law, notwithstanding the veto of the governor. And to do that, they must get two-thirds. In the House, uh, they would have had to, and they did, get 68 votes. It took 68 votes to override the veto of the governor in the House, and they got just that number. Then this morning, it uh, also came to the Senate, where it... Uh, also would have to get two-thirds vote or 32 uh, and it failed considerably to get that many in the Senate uh, 25 or 26 I don't remember exactly but it 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 didn't didn't come that close talk a little bit about that process Charlie in the sense of senators obviously had a change of heart um, through this process as it passes going up to the governor but then on this second shot, it goes down. Tell us about why things like that change. Well, um, it would be the height of arrogance, in my opinion, for someone to have voted on a bill, say, a month ago, and, and close their mind and say, I was right, and I'm never going to consider any other position on that. Um, in fact, bills, as they go through the process, we know they have to be voted on in committee, and then they have to be voted on on the floor, and then they have to go to the other... Uh, chamber and be voted on in committee and on the floor and so uh, as period of time goes by we get more information this bill as I said was pretty much under the radar we didn't get much information about it on the initial vote but by the time it went to the governor and uh, the veto was was made then there was a lot more information about what this bill was and was not and that was very important Talk about that in the sense of the process and how positive that turns out as far as democracy uh, as a whole uh, uh, takes place in the sense of you guys have so much to consider. I mean, you have thousands of bills to consider. This is, seems to be one of those things where we get to see the entire game play out and nothing comes slow or easy. I mean, nothing comes fast or easy. Yeah. I'm sorry. Well, you're right. We have so many different issues to vote on that uh, I think that we would do a disservice to our clients or our, our, our constituents right. if we just said, nope, I'm never changing my mind on something. In fact, in the past, uh, I might have voted one way on a bill in committee and then started hearing from my constituents about that issue and find out more information and think, well, maybe, maybe that was the wrong vote and maybe mm -hmm. I need to change it. Or maybe the bill gets amended in some little way. Mm -hmm. Like I say, uh, and I've said before, 
uh, we're not baseball umpires up here. You know, the baseball umpire is never wrong. <laughs> Once he calls the guy out, then yeah. he's never going to change his mind. And he's sure. going to kick the uh, manager out if he argues <laughs> with him. We are not baseball umpires. Okay. We should listen. We, when we make a vote, we should make that vote based upon the information, the best information that we can get at that moment. Okay. And that's what we did uh, today in the Senate. Well, and Senator Laster, you make a good point, too, in the sense of, we really, we are clients in the sense of us as public, just people are the ones that are electing you guys to represent right. us. And so we want to be held accountable to, to our nature of trying to hold you guys, you know, accountable with our thoughts. And, and it sounds like it's a process that's set up to work as long as we participate. That's right. And uh, as I've said a hundred times before, mm -hmm. uh, we do listen. Um, we, we get issues up here all the time that, uh, that it's very important to the legislators to hear from the people back home. And so, uh, as I've always said, uh, if you're from my district and I get a phone call or an email or a letter, uh, I'm going to listen to what you have to say. Well, and I'll tell you what, that's one call. It's not 1,000, it's not 5,000 that we have to motivate. It's just us and maybe five of our friends. Get involved and uh, let's make an impact for, for a better Oklahoma. Thanks, Charlie, right. very much. My pleasure.